I'd like you to take a moment for everybody to close their eyes. Put your hands in the air if you'd like to change one or more thing about your body. It doesn't matter how small it is, just be honest and bear with me for a moment. Open your eyes and take a look around. All of you have just validated this talk that I am about to do. All of you, a mix of ages, genders, ethnicities and backgrounds, have this one thing in common, and it's the way you view yourselves. My name's Hannah, I'm 19, and I share that thing in common with you. I'm not going to stand here and pretend that I don't look at people in magazines and think I'd quite like to look like that. Because, contrary to popular belief, just because I'm slim doesn't mean I love my body just like everybody else. I'd like to talk about like, these ideals that we thrust upon young people and how that in turn can affect them growing up. The other day, I heard some young children talking. I guess they're aged at around about nine, and they were talking about what they want to be when they grow up. And one of them said to the other one, I want to be skinny with big boobs. At age nine, this is what was going through their minds. I'd like to think that at age nine, I was saying, I want to be an astronaut or a ballerina or something else that I'm really not right now. And how I look didn't really come into play. Like, how is that going to start manifesting itself by the time they reach their teenage years if they're already fixated with it at age nine? I mean, because when you're a teenager, all you want to do is fit in. But when did fit in become conforming to the diet world? Society's ideal of a woman is a one with a nipped in waist, big boobs and a big bum, but not too big of a bum because ladies, that causes you problems. <laughs> if you're a man, you have to be tall, avoid shortness at all costs because we quite clearly pick our height. You have to have toned arms, it is an essential. Now that we have this cleared up, allow us to continue. For starters, I hate the phrase real woman. I don't even know if hate's the right word, more I just don't understand the point of it. We preach from the rooftops that a real woman is curvaceous and confident in her own body, yet the ones we see in magazines are all nipped, tucked and airbrushed within an inch of their life. I mean, why are we throwing about these indefinable terms and what actually are we supposed to be? I'm five foot six and eight stone ten. I've got a washboard top half and a bottom half that's a little bit bigger. But according to the media, I'm just not a real woman because I don't believe in dieting or detoxing or, and I'm not curvaceous. I don't have the budget to, to be able to employ a personal trainer or have somebody airbrush me when my skin is imperfect. But you know what? I don't think I'd really want the budget to do that either. Saying this, 50% of teenage girls think that they have body image problems and one third of them want to look like models in magazines. I mean, if this is what they're like in teenage years, how can we expect them to grow up to be both physically and mentally healthy adults when we're thrusting such toxic ideals on them? I mean, some of the things you read in magazines, they don't even make sense. Like, what do they mean? What is pre-toxin? Apparently, for all of you also wondering, it is preparing your body to process natural toxins. And here's me thinking mine could do it all by itself without a ridiculous, expensive drink to help it. <laughs> now let's take a few more, look at a few more absurd diets. The long breath diet. Spend two minutes per day taking deep breaths while it's tensing various muscles. Apparently, you can lose two stone in seven weeks with it. <laughs> it's a little unbelievable, but apparently it's possible. The Atkins diet, goodbye carbs, despite them being one of your main food groups, apparently don't need them losing weight better, apparently. The M diet, replace one meal a day with a mushroom-based diet. <laughs> lose pounds while saving pounds, and apparently it can also conserve your boobs just in case you're concerned about them going extinct. <laughs> The lemonade syrup diet, no solid food for two weeks, and surprisingly, you lose weight by not having solid food for two weeks. <laughs> they eat only when naked in front of the mirror. Also surprising that that makes you lose weight because everybody wants to see themselves eating whilst naked. <laughs> when did eating become such an antisocial activity? What happened to it being a sociable time to catch up with your friends or a way to fuel your body? We're just now making it the enemy. Why is food the enemy? It would be easy for me to stand here as a woman and act all hard done by and say that we have it harder. But let's be honest, it's becoming much more equal. The surge in the idea of a metrosexual has made it much more harder for men, just like women. I mean, we did ask for equality, didn't we? And one third of men would give an entire year of their life just to have the perfect body. What I'm trying to say is, body image doesn't discriminate. It's a construct that affects all of us in society and we really need to start focusing on how to change this. 
I mean, there's apparently a surgery that can fix everything about your body. There's mammoplasties, autoplasties, labiaplasties, rhinoplasties, every old plasty, there's a plasty for everything. <laughs> to so-called fix things, but more often than not, the things we're fixing are just aging. We're going to get old, so we may as well just do it. What can we do about these problems? Teach media literacy in schools. I mean, technology is amazing nowadays, but you need to teach young people that these beautiful men and women we see in magazines, more often than not, don't actually look like that. They're changed so much so that they don't even re resemble what they did beforehand. If you have the power to influence the minds of young people, be careful what you say. I mean, success should not be linked to how they look. I mean, really, it's the most exciting thing you can find to talk about, which celebrity gained or lost a few pounds. I mean, who really cares about that? Talk politics, talk success, talk ambitions, talk, talk dreams, talk healthy. Don't talk about these extreme diets. Nobody actually cares about it. All of this body talk is thrown about like it really matters that much, like it's the route to success. Praise your children and peers on their academic successes, personal achievements, and their independence. Not their ability to shed or gain a few pounds to fit into that size zero. Teach them to be strong, healthy influencers of the future. Teach them to find an achievable goal by looking in the mirror and finding a young person with a bright future.